said, well the views there are for some of the guests who are here with us this evening. We're waiting for the formal part of the evening to uh, start, so while we do wait, I'm going to put you both on the spot. Uh, Gabby, who do you think is going to win? Who do I think is going to, or who do I think should? You can answer both questions. <laughs> well. To be more captain, I think. Uh, Captain or no violet for the whale. Okay, but so Captain, pull the edge in. Really? Okay, well, we shall see if you're right. Do stay with us. I'm now going to hand you over, I think, to the chairman of the judges, Robert McFarland. That resonant introduction. Good evening to you all, ladies and gentlemen. S feedback, uh, forgive me. Uh, so, it has been a long path to this point. We began our work in late November last year. It took us nine months subsequently to read 151 novels. I, I am a walker, uh, fond of walking, as uh, almost all people are, and so I, I'm also fond of quantifying tasks in terms of distance. So my, my maths tells me that we, walked uh, we, we read around 20 kilometers of prose as measured in 12-point Garamond. I am a Garamond man. I confess it here, occasional bouts of the Cambrian the odd fit of the wingdings, but mostly, mostly Garamond. Um, it was an exhausting and a fascinating journey. Along the way, we met missionaries, scientists, priests, jihadists, mothers, brothers, fathers, siblings, mystics. We met many murderers, many, many murderers, and almost all of them had fancy prose styles, to borrow from uh, Vladimir Nabokov's famous line. We read sci-fi, spy-fi, cli-fi. We read lit-fic, hist-fic. We read dick-fic, detective fiction, a little of the other. We read gumshoe. We read screwball. We passed through landscapes of great, great strangeness. We were, by turns, amazed, saddened, bored, very bored, <laughs> confided in, and betrayed. The very best books we read reminded us of the peculiar powers of the novel as a form, among them to secure passage into regions of the mind otherwise inaccessible, to examine the workings of memory and the makings of thought, and to use the postulatory power of fiction to illuminate, criticize, or repattern what we might consider to be the real. Uh, some of you will know, and I thought of it often, Milan Kundera's lovely little apothem about the novel. He says that the novel has knowledge as its only morality as a form. What does he mean by that? I think he means something along these lines, that true novels discover what only the novel can, not the TV miniseries, not the newspaper column, not the historical essay. To survive and thrive, the novel must continue to discover what only the novel can discover. Those books that we have celebrated in our long list and our short list brilliantly fulfill Kundera's demand. Uh, before I turn to that shortlist, I must give thanks. I give thanks to Ian Truin for his wise, quiet counsel throughout. He is the benign Thomas Cromwell of the Man Booker Prize. 